Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep, and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And today we're going to ramble about the stock market, and about turkey, and about a bunch of turkeys in the stock market, <laughs> and about money, and about where you should put your money, and about maybe where you shouldn't put your money. <laughs> so what exactly is going on? Um, the... Uh, what is it? The, the Turkey Liar? Is that what it's called? The L-I-R-E, the Liar? Or Iyer? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But the uh, the currency is struggling, and it's taking down um, some of the other global markets down with it. It's been affecting the U.S. economy. Um, and there are some uh, sites, some experts that are saying, Oh, this is a great time to get into the market and start buying. Um, but should you? Should you really think about jumping in right now? I mean, yeah, the market's gone down, but there are other things to consider. The market right now is like really close to where it was before it fell towards the end of January. Would you really want to buy stock? I mean, invest right now? I don't know, but we're going to go over a couple of articles, and then I'm going to show you some uh, some charts on the uh, the S and P. Uh, and I don't know. You tell me what you think. Okay, so let's. There's uh, three articles that I want to go over here, and as usual, the links will be in the description, so you can take a look at this for yourselves. So this first one is from a site called Market Watch, and this says U.S. stocks close lower as Turkey currency crisis dampens risk appetite. What the heck kind of sentence is this? Anyway, this is on August 13th, which is today, um, the day that I'm actually uh, filming this, and this will uh, go out uh, tomorrow morning, yeah, the 14th. So when you're watching this, you know, it could be like five years from now. Anyway, um, so global markets in retreat again. This looks like Kevin Spacey. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. But anyway, you know, Kevin Spacey with a milk mustache or something. But anyway, here, uh, U.S. stocks closed lower Monday with the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average down for a fourth straight session as the ongoing turmoil in Turkey dampen investors' appetite for riskier assets. While the U.S. doesn't have much direct e economic exposure to the country, instability in the region sparked concerns that its problems could spill over to other parts of the world, ex exacerbating the uncertainty surrounding trade relations between the U.S. and its major trading partners. And then it goes into benchmarking, and then I got stuff popping up here. What drove the market? Blah, 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 blah. The Turkish lira, lira, that's how it's pronounced, not the lira, extended its slide with one dollar buying a whole bunch of numbers. What were market participants saying? We're going through a rolling crisis phase. Markets have become so stretched in terms of nerve that any headline risk becomes a source of investor angst. What's new? They act like this is news or something. I don't see Turkey as significant risk, but investors are very worried about what the next headline risk is going to be. The bottom line is that the volatility seen in overseas currency markets does not change the immediate picture for the stock market. The market continues to be driven by improving economic conditions. This is underscored by a report last week showing confidence among small businesses, blah, 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 blah. And it just kind of goes on. So anyway, that's what's kind of going on um right now in the uh stock now i believe there is something going on
And I think this is also related to... Uh, I don't know if this is fake news or anything, but um, President Trump's trade war with Turkey, um, Europe-wide recession after Lira falls by 20%. So, I mean, this is the little trade war. I mean, my goodness, 2018 is like the year of the trade war, let me tell you. So, you know, they talk, you know, they talk about how... Um, just a little bit bit of piece of news and everyone gets spooked it's been like that all year you know it's this is not like news or anything like that but um okay so let's go to let's go to this one here so now the thing is should you be um should you be going into the market or should you not be going into the market? You know, that, that's, that's the question. Um, that was not the article that I wanted to show, although we can show it. Let me see here. I'm trying to find the, trying to find the actual article here. Blah, 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 blah. Huh. <laughs> Okay. So the, it's all over the place. People just don't, don't know what, what to think. Okay. So there's this article. All right. So this was today. U.S. investors should see this Turkish crisis as a buying opportunity. All right. So with how the market has gone down, they're saying, oh, yeah, this is a good time to actually start buying into the market. Should you? Well, that's the question. So they're saying, oh, well, you know, this is a good time to go in because the world's central banks will almost certainly make sure that there is plenty of liquidity to keep Turkey's crisis from spreading too far. And inevitably, much of that liquidity will make its way into the equity markets, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then they kind of show this graph. Um, and then there's this here. The turkey crisis didn't spark much of a buying opportunity in U.S. stocks. Oh, well, you think? <laughs> um, well, there's not much really to talk about here. Oh, it's it's a um, it's a video. So you can watch this video if you want. But I again, I have I'll have a link on here that way you can take a look at it. Um. That's just my Google search. So there's this. And then you've got Goldman Goldman and Sachs saying they're laying out a scenario that say, oh, there could be a stock market surge. And this was 11 hours ago. You know, and this guy, this guy agrees. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to go up. We're, we're, we're doing good. So Goldman Sachs, they say several clients are asking what will happen to the stock market if trade tensions ease and economic growth stays strong. Well, yeah, if trade tensions ease, I'm, it would make sense the market would go up. We were surprised this week when several investors actually struck a different chord. Blah, 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 blah. So Goldman Sachs predicts the markets will not move much into year end, but some of the firm's clients are saying the S&P 500 could rally sharply higher. The firm said the second quarter of corporate earnings seasons was stellar. Well, I mean, I will give it that the the earning the earning seasons was good. That this has been a really good earning seasons, uh, best earning earning season since 2010. Investors remain concerned about trade and tariffs. Yeah, that's been a big thing this year. Um, given our forecast for decelerating U.S. economic growth, investors should focus on stocks providing the fastest top line growth. Blah 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 blah. Now. So you've got you've got one side saying, yeah, no, that was a great buying opportunity. Oh, stocks could surge. But here's it. We'll just take that advertisement right off there. Here's the other part. The S&P 500 is dangerously close to forming this notoriously bearish chart pattern. This is the other side 
Okay, this is the bear side of things. Of maybe you should not put your money into the market. Here's what they're saying. It may be time to respect the stock chart voodoo with the S&P 500 index testing, but not eclipsing its January highs amid a pullback on Turkey's currency crisis. The benchmark may have formed a dreaded double top. A double top stock formation is often seen as a bearish reversal pattern. It's characterized as two consecutive peaks that are almost identical with a decent sized trowel in the middle. That trowel this time around this this time around ran from the early February lows to mid June. And I've remember reading, and there's another article that when it came to um, corrections, this has got to be like one of the longest corrections that we've had. I mean, this has been a correction for a long, long time, months. So look at this chart here. This was at the end of January, and this is where we had that really sharp fall. I actually made money here. You're probably thinking, how'd you make money? Well, I bought a put option. That's how. <laughs> and I made money. Um, yeah, so you've got this. Now, this is where we're at. We're right down here. Okay. Do Would you... Seriously, would you really buy stock right here, right now? Or would you wait? Me, personally, I would wait. Where this graph is, I would wait for this to clear. I would wait for the market to cle actually clear, because this is a resistance right here. I would wait for the market to actually clear this resistance and test it. It would have to clear it and then come back down and test it as, as a line of support. I would not jump in until that actually happens. Because right, I mean, for all we know, there could be a false signal. It could go right, it could, it, it could go over it, right? But then it could just fall right back down. Because there could be some news story that, you know, Trump's nose fell off or something, you know, and the whole market goes into a... a, a a fit of panic or something I, you know I don't know but that to me is my whole feeling on on the matter is you know should should you well I don't know me personally I I would not get into it unless you're going to protect yourself on the downside you protect yourself on the downside then you know you'll probably be okay you know so if you if you've got um, investments and you've got them protected with like a put option, you know, then in case something does go wrong, then either one, you're at least making some money off of that put or, you know, if things get bad, you can go ahead and at least, you know, exercise that, that put option and, and sell your stock. But anyway, um, just kind of going back into this article here, more on the double pot, there's a little bit of chew on for both the bulls and the bears with the market near a double top formation. Um, the retest of old highs is positive, but it also carries a cautionary note along with it. We do have to point out that what we've seen this year is exactly what we saw in the years where the last two bear markets began, like this year. Those last two examples saw a new all-time high, followed by a 10% correction, and then a multi-month rally that took it back very near its previous all-time highs within 1%. Again, this is exactly what has taken place so far this year. Of course, this doesn't mean that we'll see another major double top this year. We saw a very similar move back in 2014, but the market just kept on rallying. It also doesn't mean we'll see a major 50% decline like we saw in the previous two examples. So blah, blah, blah. All right. So with that in mind, let's take a look at, uh, let's, let's take a look at chart and see what we got. All right. So here we are. Here is the S and P. This is spy. This is the, uh, ETF. This is what I, I follow. Um, mostly this is what I tend to trade on. 
with options um, because I don't have a whole lot of money to work with. So I don't do stocks. I just work with options. Um, but this is looking at the uh, one minute graph. All right. And up here. OK. This is that peak. OK, this is that second double top um, that we just recently hit. The first one was in January. Here's the second one. OK, we hit it and then we kind of fell down and went back up. And then and so for like three days in a row, boom, 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 we didn't go past it. And I knew, I knew when this was happening, I'm like, oh, I'm buying a put. And sure enough, it fell like the next day and I made some money. So that was, that was cool. Um, not like I made a lot of money, but you know, <laughs> not, this, this is not a get rich uh, scheme. You know, it, if you're going to try to get into this, trying to get rich quick, you're going to lose a lot of money. Um, so yeah the whole turkey incident one i think the turkey and in, the, the turkey incident has something to do with this but i also think there is a pullback because it hit this resistance uh three days in a row and then it fell so i think there's there's two reasons why the market fell why 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 it pulled back they're trying to say, oh, the market fell like four days in a row. I don't know. I don't. I consider it fell two days in a row, and not really four. I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of fell, you know, a little bit here, but I don't know. I'm just kind of like looking at it average wise. But I think it definitely fell two days in a row. I mean, from from here to here, that's one. From here to here, that's two. From I don't know, these are kind of the same to me. I don't know. Let's not get technical. <laughs> all right but here is yesterday here's today um or this is two days ago this is yesterday you know when, whenever you know from the day this video is published but so oh man i don't know this is where we're sitting this line here represents a call option that I have. Um, I bought this, and I, I it was somewhere around here. Um, I believe the market's going to be uh, going back up, just uh, not for very long. <laughs> so we're on a. Um, let's take a look at. Here's that chart. All right. So here is the January, end of January, right? And here it is again uh, in August. See, it's real close. You see that? So now if you look at this, now if you use, uh, I mean, now the fundamentals are really good. And plus, if you, you know, you use your, your little chart bars and lines and all that other stuff you know you can see that there you can draw a line here and it's in you've, you've got higher lows and higher highs and so it looks like it's going in the right direction it looks like it's it's going the way that it should be going so it's very possible that this could be making its way back up and it could very well break this resistance up here you know, and if it does, you know, we could be seeing, you know, record highs, you know, uh, for the rest of this year or maybe a few times this year. Um, or it may not. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, this peak here is kind of close to this one. So, you know, do we have a double top here or is it possible we have a triple top? You know, I mean, we're pretty darn close here. And I've got some other lines here that are also, uh, and I've got another video in regards to whether or not, you know, is the market going to be, uh, do we have a bear market coming or not? 
and this this line here is the 100 uh, day moving average this one here is a 200 day moving average and I've seen a pattern to when this 100 day moving average crosses under the 200 day moving average the market typically goes down into a bear market uh, or at least temporarily or sometimes for a few years so check out that video and you'll see exactly what I mean and look what look what it it's getting closer and closer it looks like it's kind of I don't know I mean it's inching awfully close I mean all it needs to do is do uh, you know a, a dip like this right here to get this even closer so it's I don't know I mean you can see it here right you can see how it it crossed I mean, I'm not making this up it crossed here crossed here and then it crossed back up and it was fine but you see it crossed here and, and you know and it dipped and it dipped again and what were they talking about 2014 now they were talking about I don't know what they're talking about as far as 2014 this is 2014 right right in here as far as a double top oh well, maybe they're talking about this in here somewhere Yeah, there's this here, and then it fell back down again. So, but yeah, and this yellow line here is the 20 day moving average. That's another thing that I look at too. So, you can see how it was up here over the 100 day, and uh, for the most part, it's kind of okay. But then when it starts to cross underneath here, then you know there's, there's trouble. But but then it starts to cross under again. But do you see that? So look at this again up here. So this is way up here. But all this has to do is fall back down again. And this is going to converge with this. And this will converge with this. And then, you know, you're looking at a market that's going to be going down. Maybe I'm right. You know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I don't know. But that that's what I'm seeing. Um, and there are some other uh, things that I'm taking a look at, too. Um, of course, I take a look at the M's and the W's. Um, or, you know, some call it the head, head and shoulders or, you know, whatever you want to call it. I also take a look at... I found this out from um, another investor he uses a hundred day a hundred and eighty day uh, simple moving average and a exponential moving average and when one crosses the other it's it's usually a a, a sign that things are going to start changing going the other way and so I started studying that and there tends to be a pattern. There tends to be a little bit of truth of what he was saying. So I'll show that to you here. So this red line is the 180 day simple moving average. This green line is the 180 day exponential moving average. We're looking at a 60 minute uh, chart. So here's that W. Okay, so we're, we've got we've got the other part of the W here that hasn't formed yet that's why that's why I have that call I believe that the market is going to be going uh, back up at least temporarily if it doesn't I'll buy a put and, and I'll protect myself on the downside but anyway if you take a look at this this green line I always say the follow the green line and where it goes and it's crossed under the red line. This usually indicates that the market is going to be going down. So if we were to expand this out, and, and don't always use one, always take a look at your other stuff. I, I look at the RSI too, as far as if something is overbought or oversold. So use a combination of stuff. But take a look 
take a look right here right around here do you see how the green line started to cross and then it started to go under and then see look what happened see that see and it's happening again here you know it took a little bit see it start it started crossing under it didn't go fall down right away it went back up so you know it it may do the same thing again here let's zoom in a little further let's look at the 30 minute chart okay now we're looking at some candles candlesticks here okay and i got the same thing going on here too i've got the 180 day um simple and exponential uh moving averages here just to kind of give it a more of a fine-tuned uh look So you can see here, here's the green line. It went underneath the red and it started going down, came up, started going up. Now it's just kind of dancing around it. So, I mean, we're right now we're kind of along the line. So it's not quite sure what's going to happen just yet. Um... My plan is to just kind of hang on. Uh, if the market goes up tomorrow, I'm going to see whatever money I can try to make off of this uh, this call option and get a put option somewhere up here just to kind of protect it on the downside and just kind of go from there. It's, it's a real finicky market. Um, it's 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 like you want to go one direction but you have to protect you have to protect yourself in the other direction and now I know it's like oh I'm making money this way but now I'm losing money this way so it's you kind of have to go back and forth a little bit and balance it at least that's the only way that I've been able to um, do anything uh, with the market because it's just it's just kind of crazy but um that is that's it that's really all all i have on it um what do you guys think do you really think really think now's a good time to really start buying stocks I, options maybe May, you know maybe get an option um you know get an option make a little bit of money off of it and sell it but stocks um you know maybe if you get some stocks and sell it you know within a day do a little bit of day trading or swing trading but for the long term me personally i wouldn't what would you do what do you think um let me know in the comments and uh other than that i appreciate you uh checking out this video so uh click like if you liked it and uh let me know if you want to see uh more videos like this um i definitely like uh you know i'm I like doing stuff with with the stock market, so I mean I'm not a pro by any means. Uh, I just but I just keep it real, you know. I I don't pretend to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm not some big uh, pro or anything like that. So I mean, don't take what I say for gold. But I, I'm I'm just gonna be straight up and honest with you about how I think about things. I'm not going to try to try to lay it lay it thick or anything like that. I'm just I'm just going to give you my my opinions and my viewpoints on what I see and you know and just take that for whatever it's worth. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for tuning in and uh we'll see you on the next rambling video. And if you enjoyed that topic, then you might enjoy my rambles on these topics. I make videos all the time on no particular schedule. Remember, your comments and rambles are also welcome here. Subscribe to get notified of more videos, and thank you for watching.